Year after year in the United States, 30,000 deaths are attributed to guns. How did we ever get here? And why do we accept this? The truth is that urban, suburban, small town, and rural areas in every state are all at risk. There is still this crippling level of denial that sort of has seeped into everything in our communities about how we see the issue, how we excuse it, how we tolerate it. The silence, the denial, we're trapped in it. It's like, it's like concrete that we live in. And I think it's because if we were not in, if we were out of denial, we would be crazy, all of us. We would be scared down to the bone about the reality of the world that we live in. So I like to imagine reframing discussion of gun violence from an ongoing, no-win argument to a new conversation, one that is inclusive and based on strategies and tools of public health prevention. So when I've uh, talked about the public health issues surrounding gun violence, firearm-related deaths and injuries to diverse audiences, there's a uniform response, a positive response. It's everybody's issue. Nobody wants deaths in their communities from homicides and suicides. Nobody does, so it's a way to gain common ground. You frame it as a public health issue. You frame it in the context of high-risk environments, access to products illegally with high-risk behaviors. You broaden the discussion to not limit it to behavioral issues. That broadening has huge benefits. This common sense approach to the bewildering American dilemma looks at the issue as an epidemic. And just like any other epidemic, without intervention, increased infection and fatalities are predictable. But with intervention, they are also preventable. In the case of gun design, if you reduce the likelihood of the energy release, that's primary prevention. And that can be done in a variety of ways. Teaching children, don't touch a gun. That has limits. So you teach children, don't touch a gun, and you design guns that they can't use. That goes with poisonings. Tell children, don't go in the medicine cabinet and play with these medicines. Well, the other strategy is design the medicine container so that children can't get access to lethal amounts of chemical energy. Those are public health injury prevention and control principles. The gun rights issue, when the Second Amendment is discussed and rediscussed and discussed again, to me is for those constitutional historians and lawyers and so forth. I put that to the side. The public health approach takes it out. The NRA is a safety marksmanship organization. That's why it was formed. We've created their impact by, by engaging them in a public health discussion. It's not a public health agency. So why are we engaging that discussion with them? It's a non-issue. You have to ask yourself, who does, the old, who does that serve, the old conversation? Who, who gets served by us being stuck?